In this video, I will explain to you how the multi-tenancy works in Awingu. So first thing you need to know is that Awingu is fully multi-tenant. So that means that on a single Awingu appliance or on an Awingu cluster, you can create different environments. And each environment can have its own security, uh, an own Active Directory, uh, own branding, own configuration, own admin. So you can make completely isolated environments onto a single uh, Awingu appliance. To do that, what you need to do is actually very simple. Uh, in the system settings, uh, where uh, you go to global domains, you will see that uh, it's not only possible to add one domain over there, but you can add multiple ones. Actually, when, whenever you add an extra domain, you're creating automatically an extra tenant. So on uh, this uh, setup, what I have is I have my uh, training machine uh, and I have already created two additional tenants. So in total, there are three tenants uh, on this uh, machine. Uh, I have my training, I have Superman and I have Spider-Man. Yeah? Um, what you need to know is that uh, for each tenant, if you if you make the configuration, so if you add the, the domain in the uh, Awingu environment, there are a few settings which are important. So the, the first one which is important is actually the host headers. So uh, if you work with multiple um, tenants, uh, Awingu needs to know which tenant it needs to load if a user goes to the Awingu appliance. And this is done based on the host headers. So uh, you can associate one or more host headers with each of the tenants. A host header is a, is a DNS name, so Awingu knows that if somebody goes to that DNS name, it needs to load this uh, environment. So uh, what I have is uh, in this setup, I have, for example, uh, linked remote awingu.com to my uh, training tenant. But for my uh, Superman tenant, uh, I have uh, superman.awingu.com. Uh, and for my uh, Spider-Man tenant, I have uh, spider-man.awingu.com. Um, Whenever you add an extra tenant in Awingu, you will also see that uh, there will be a drop-down list on the, on the left side, for example, of the system settings and also of the dashboard. This is there uh, because everything on the left side of the menu, so configure, manage, changes, can be configured per tenant. Everything on the right side, so everything which is under global or uh, global settings of the full setup. So if you make a change on the right side, it has impact on the full appliance. If you make a change on the left side, it has only impact on the tenant. Um, second thing you need to know uh, for the multi-tenancy is the concept of the administrative domains. So one or more tenants can be administrative in Awingu. And that means that if you're admin on one of those tenants, you're automatically admin on the full Awingu appliance. So in my case, I have one administrative tenant, which is uh, the training one, the, the remote Awingu.com. And uh, because I'm logged into that one, I have automatically access also to the um, system settings and the dashboard of the other tenants and I have uh, access to the global uh, settings. If I would log in as an admin on uh, Superman or Spider-Man, which are no administrative tenants, uh, you will see that I don't have those rights. Um, I will show you that in, uh, in one minute. Um, another thing is the default tenant. So um, with the administrative tenants, multiple tenants can be administrative. With the default tenant, there can only be one default uh, tenant. The default tenant is the, the tenant which will be loaded when uh, you go to the Awingu appliance on an unknown host header. So if you go to uh, an, a DNS name, which is not uh, associated with any of the, of the tenants, Awingu will not know which one of the tenants it needs to load, and it will uh, load the default one. Um, so let's have a, a quick look. So this is uh, Spider-Man. So as you can see, branding is uh, completely different than, uh, than my uh, uh, remote one. Uh, if I log in, for example, on Spider-Man with my, uh, with my account, um, I'm also admin on uh, that tenant. If I open in here, for example, the, the system settings, you will see that I don't have any access to the, the global settings. I can only make changes to the uh, settings which are linked to this, uh, this tenant. And it's the same thing with the dashboard. If I open the dashboard in a uh, non-administrative tenant, I can see my uh, connections. I can see the uh, audit logs of only this uh, tenant, but I cannot see the audit logs of the uh, other tenant. If I go back to my uh, master tenant, so to my administrative tenant, and then, for example, I open over here the uh, dashboard, uh, you will see that I have access to all the uh, audit files. So, uh, for example, if I go to the user logs, you will see that I have uh, all the log files, both from Superman, Spider-Man, and my uh, training. Of course, I can filter. If I only want to see the ones from, uh, from Spider-Man, I can just filter in here. Same thing with uh, some generic uh, settings which are available for the full uh, appliance, like uh, the licenses or the, the servers itself. Uh, if I want to uh, see those, uh, I need to be uh, logged in as an admin on an uh, administrative uh, tenant. 
there are no real limitations so you can make as many uh, tenants as you want there's also no overhead uh, on it so um, it's not that for example if you have like two tenants of 20 users it would consume more memory or cpu than uh, one tenant or 40 users that's uh, that's not the case so uh, it's certainly a feature which uh, which has uh, a high value uh, to be used in the, in the Navingu setup.